Hello, my beautiful and lovely gamers. My name is John. Today, we are taking a look at Burger Flipper, the friend himself. We're breaking down here a Grandmaster game. Essentially, taking a look at a couple of things. It's, uh, you know, a little bit of place of how you guys can dominate. But especially looking at how he deals under pressure. Because he will be focused, but like, two, three, four guys. The friend won't give a fuck. And he will still be playing. He won't take himself out of combat. He will be very, very active. And he will have a very big impact on the match. Even though he's going to focus quite a lot. And that's what we're going to take a look at today. Try to set up a, a little bit of a plan. And, well, let no better do. Let's really just try to jump into it. Um, let's quickly break down his team composition. We always do this from the top up. We do tanks first. Main tank. Who's that? Ryan. Okay. Stronger main group. Not a small ball, but a pretty strong main group. Add that to his off tank. That's a diva. Okay. We have some high control. We can probably deal with some tanks range dps like widowmaker and so on however can probably slow out the can so not these guys will be pressured by a main group even though the main group can probably hold its own let's take a look at the dps okay we have a widowmaker so okay some range damage again can vary especially on gibraltar which we are looking at now can very easily support these two guys so we have some damage here can hopefully sold out some of the dps's can hopefully help um, make sure that tanks and other people have, pre have problem pushing our main group as if we're defending good heal from Rana, good heal from baptiste makes this main group in general very survivable and alive with low damage output but survivable and has if you have so you have a strong main group just not as much damage as you might like and then the fran on tracer onto that back line so that's real the thing and let's take a look at some of the positioning that he's gonna take so he's gonna start in this position and well let's look at the game plan let's look at why this position is strong why it's potentially bad we we'll see a lot of players normally play here we'd like to play bridge control uh, on first point when we're trying to defend why because if enemy team doesn't give bridge control then we have control over this hub we talked about hubs before in the channel so most of you guys uh, know about it no not porn hub not that kind of hub but <clears throat> a general hub on the map which just if you're here you have control over majority of the areas especially as a tracer but just in general you have of course it immediately control over the area is just very close to it as you're in your effective range depending on what here you add this is on to look very wrong with the with the on and the <coughs> with the on and the winston here uh, ignore that please know the monetize and um, besides that you do have range right you have reach you can reach over here you can reach the widow no problem you can start going down here you can start going in here of course right he plays here in the beginning um you can go over here and from there on and you can see how high grounds on this map really moves together and that's a big part of the of the way that the positioning and the gameplay is that the fram plays here in a way that okay i if i get pressured okay i have a lot of areas to rotate to that don't take me out of combat and that's how this works because from here you can go anywhere you from here you can go for example over here or from this room you can go over here either way you get over here somehow from here you can of course rotate up here to blue go blue and from blue you can go here or you can continue over here, depending on which one you want. From here, you can go in here, and from there, you go back here. Right from here, you can go here. So you can see how it's a map that just continues to expand on itself. So if I'm starting here, right, the same here. For example, I can rotate over here, right? I have one little bit too short blink there. And from here, I can go up here, right? So now I'm back, right? Down here, and up here, right? From here, I can go blue, right, which is a fairly normal easy rotation, which allows me this high ground control again right um if i'm up here i can also just immediately go here right and from here i can go blue and from blue i can go catwalk and then back to blue right and it means that i've controlled really well over all hubs i want to fight more uh towards uh, tunnels here i can fight here i can i want to hit the back line i can play here and blink down for example an attack or you can blink over here and start playing over here more right which gives you some better denial right from here you can go here for example, if you want to fight here, for some weird reason, there's a fight over here, right? Or immediately go up here, right? Scuff Pulse Bomb, and so on, right? So, he plays a lot up here, and this is him. He plays high grounds, very effectively, makes him difficult to catch, gives him a lot of verticality. Depend Imagine if he was playing low grounds, constantly, like he's playing down here, uh, if he starts down here, right? People come, he shoots, he get pushed, okay? He rotates up here, up here. Now he needs to rotate here, he can get cash there, there, and there, easily die. Then he plays here, he has to play, for example, server. Also, you need to pressure him. The rotation comes out, right? And now he's very much out of the fight, right? So instead, of instead, he can rotate on high ground, it's very difficult to get him. He gets access to a lot, and because he's so fast, you try to pressure him, for example, here, until you dive him. He goes here, okay, all of a sudden that dive wasn't as effective. And now, he can just go back. 
and fight if he wants to or he can fight here no matter where he wants he can always be taken in the fight you will see the same thing happening on second he will play for example here i'll swap to my pen he will play here or here access and access then he can go here to access this and here to access here right so he can do this constantly and he constantly do that the way that he moves around make sure that he doesn't take himself out of the fight and constantly is active and let's take a look at that now he will be pressured a lot so he'll just be waiting here seeing if like somebody comes up maybe he can assassinate the widowmaker blink around kite the monkey fight the monkey okay a little bit of recall comes out here okay he has no he has no recall the somber will now challenge him because the monkey probably called it and he will take the duel understand that he can't win immediately go back to help back instead of rotating back to his team he's rotating this way now right so he's rotating here taking the mega and now he's back into his original position he didn't take himself out of the fight in any way Get sniped by the widow, so now he knows where there's a widow. Okay, great. So he'll wait. Why is he waiting right now? Why is he crossing? As we talked about before, because of recall, right? You don't want to waste your recall if not possible. You want it up so you can survive in case you get shot. So he'll wait. Four, three, two. He'll try to walk. He'll get shot because he peeks too early and has to recall. But he's still in the same position. And while he's here, the, the Widowmaker is not doing anything. As long as he's there, the Widowmaker is not really doing a lot. He now understands that there is a Widowmaker on his right, right? And now he's been out of combat for a little bit of a while because he's been so by the Widow and there was so much pressure on him. But he's not doing what a lot of other people would do and that's just like run in and quit and die. He understands his limits and he stays to his limits. If I go, I'll die. He knows that there's a Widowmaker on his right side somewhere. So meaning he can't peek bridge easily without blinking over because there's a big chance he'll just get sniped and outranged. And this isn't one of those either where just like blink diving the Widow if she's hotscoping you is normally not that smart right so he'll be going here checking and just waiting and he will go for the honor now instead of full committing onto the honor you'll see what he will do instead as he still knows there's a word on my right side right know where your threats are all the time he deals some damage he blinks around he didn't get enough damage this is worth trying to fight so he'll be like okay fighting here fighting outside of the range of the uh, the uh, the honor and notice again now there's like so many people he is stalling he had, he's attacking the Arnold, so the Arnold's kind of active. These two are here, and the Widowmaker's probably still looking for him and playing a little bit passive. He's taking three players out of the combat right now with playing here. He's getting pressured. He kites around. He jukes them. I do believe that they, they ran that way, and he went this way. This way is also safer, because if, even if they had um, started fighting in here, he could blink here and get to safety over the server because he's so much faster. So I don't think that that would have mattered really that much. He checks his back line, checks around. And here's the Widow, and now he goes for it, right? So he's been playing catch with this Widowmaker for a good while now. But because he never takes himself out of combat, it's fine, right? Beautiful, just a smooth pulse. Get some damage in. Okay, runs here, tries to help a little bit with a kill. That gets finished off anyway. And now he rotates to blue box and goes back into a position, right? And this is very, very... This is, again, if you notice, he's not been out of combat for very long. He's just been playing around and looking for what goes, what's going on around him. He has walls now, they're hanging to the widow, so he's just playing, playing very close angle here. He doesn't have time to blink over, so he play a very close angle. Um, and now he actually does what I believe is a mistake. He engages on something that is very, very bad to engage on, and is forced to pop his recall way earlier, and now he's out of recall, right? This is not a very good move, and this also, again, to emphasize that not pro players or ex-pro players and grandmasters, also because he's probably not like super sweaty tryharding like he would do in a tournament, he's playing this game for fun. Um doesn't play com completely perfect every single time right uh, already now of course you see the baptiste you see a genji there's also an asha comes up right way too many people going in here blinking waste and recall of course it's really really bad there's like five people up here you didn't see sombra but there's five people up here now there's no recall and another blade comes through kills him but it's it's just remembering that okay not every time the pro players will play perfectly even in grandmas and so on they don't play perfectly all the fucking time goes here he gets nanoed and again notice again he doesn't go low ground he goes high ground immediately right he dies here uh, he goes high ground immediately right and plays blue box right immediately checks here and okay can i lock down some tanks i can just shoot straight down on he sees the ash he gets nanoed and one clap right one clip because of accuracy this is mostly just mechanics and going but the positioning is still the same right these positions are really good because again as always you can always drop from the high ground if you need to like he does 
He plays high ground. If there's people that he can access from the high ground, great. And then if he needs to drop, well, he drops. But only if he needs to. He doesn't, in compared to just playing local constantly. Here he's helping out a little bit, checking for where he should be translocated. She's translocated into his backline. He knows that too far. And again, he just sets up. Sets up on his high ground and checks out what he can do. There's a widow here, so he immediately zoned. And notice how little space the enemy team is working with because of this. They Every time they try to set up their backline, there is a there is a tracer on it, right? They try to put the widow maker. Every time they try to put they try to put like their range DPS out there, there's a there's a trace just pops out and zones her out, and she has to kite backwards and take a lot of resource and healing. Same goes with Anna. If they advance and they leave the the, the support backline behind, okay, well that's free kills or free pressure from the front. And they, and this is the problem with having a tracer in your backline that he is constantly, constantly, constantly because he doesn't take him out normally, especially in lower levels. Like if you're playing diamond. If the tracer forces recall, they will normally play pay passive because they will burn their recall too early. Or if they take too much damage, instead of rotating, for example, if they're here, instead of rotating back, they will rotate out, right? And they will go, for example, under and then back to their team, and then they will get then they will play in their team, right? But doing that, okay, great. You allow a lot of space. The winner can set up. The friend doesn't do that. The friend tries to just okay. Let's see if I can rotate into health packs. Let's see if I can rotate somewhere that I can get health. For example, up here. And back here. From here, I can now play in every every single angle. So when I do this rotation, if you advances up here, it doesn't take me long to go from here to here and then attack you, or go from here and blink over and attack you, and immediately keep pressure on. So he doesn't take himself out of the fight for very long, doing that he gets all of these nice opportunities and makes it difficult for the enemy team to actually play. It's difficult for that backline to do anything, and his their tanks can't catch him easily, right? For example, here the Widowmaker swung a two drop shot, and she's immediately just killed again, right? Now the backline is under pressure, right? Immediately he takes some damage. He's forced to recall. He plays here. He plays his angle, and the supports are again now taking a little bit out of out of the fight. He decides that okay, this is not worth. Get know your limits. He knows the limit. There are three people up there. They're probably calling that he's there, or at least have noticed because of the game sense that he's there. So he drops down and tries to take this fight with the Hammond. Make sure that he doesn't die. Sees the Ash. Immediately starts shooting the Ash, and notice how much pressure there's on him. He's constantly fighting, and he dies now because his team has. Lost all the space. They lost most of their players. Their players slowly but surely be picked apart. And his team has kind of failed him. Again, there's just so much you can do in Overwatch. That these guys have, have to respawn. They kind of fell back. Doing that, it leaves him vulnerable. As there's no, no one covering him when that chase happens. Taking a look now at second point. You will see the same thing. The same thing is constantly just happening. There's a fight here. He tries to go for a couple of kills. Goes in. Tries to pulse bomb. It doesn't land. But it's a well, it's a well worth effort. And continuously plays. Right? Here, here, here. Checking high ground. Controlling high ground. Looking for opportunities. Looking for snipers. Spy checking a little bit. Sees Diana. Sees there's not really anyone around Diana. So goes for Diana. He has recall. So this dive is more than valid. He gets the kill. Great. Now he's access into the back line. It's slow ground. So he looks for low ground targets. There we go with that. There's the Sombra here, tries to kill her, she translocates out, okay, and immediately rotates up to high ground to control high ground when it's close, right? There's a ball here, sees if there's anybody set up here, it's very, very common, right, that he, maybe he can get a pick and more staggers, and constantly aggression, constantly high ground, right? And, he, and you can see how there's a pattern here, right? He will constantly play the same way over and over again. High grounds, trying to immediately take high grounds if he needs to, he'll drop, he'll look for isolated target, he'll look for opportunities, these are another one of those uh, opportunities where it seems like he's doing something a little bit weird. It doesn't really work out. All right, he immediately goes here. He peeks. Two people. Blinks to dodge. Blink to dodge. Has to recall. No recall now, right? Which is really bad. No recall and low on blinks, right? Stuck on the high ground. And now he has to give the high ground. But still does the same thing. Rotation back and up to high ground, right? Now he holds here. And even though he messed up so bad, right? He, he burned his recall. He burned all his blink. He blinked back, back. And just straight back up. He has all his blinks now and his recall is back. And he, they didn't get much time to advance or do anything. They got some time, but not a lot. Now he's here. The Widowmaker misses her shot. He gets an anode. He goes for a couple of frags. Misses up his uh, his stuff. Instead of, right, and immediately tries to take. Misses up for a couple of stuff. Takes his recall to get his health back so he doesn't have to be out of combat for long. Goes here and very aggressively pushes his kill and... Unlucky gets headshotted, which is a really good shot for her. And now he plays Arissa, and I know that everybody wants to see that that the Fran Crisp Arissa play, and we're not going to break that down. So, to just sum it up, to kind of give a nice ending to this video, um, how the Fran plays: high grounds, connect your high grounds, look for your hubs to set up, blue box, 
right? The spaceship area, the spaceship area, which is called spaceship, but not on top of it, right? So the blue box, spaceship, and the bridge control, either here or here, depending on how aggressive you want to be, right? This, of course, most enemies checks that area. Here, you're a little bit more isolated, but you don't get checked as, checked as easily because most people in GM will check this area, right? Always rotating and thinking about your rotation strategy so you don't take yourself out of the fight. Remember, if, especially as a tracer, if you're taken out of the fight, very similar to a Sombra, where you're trying to get a positioning, you get taken out of the fight, it, it's worth. It, they didn't kill you, but they took you out of the fight, so you're not valid anymore. So you're practic you're like half dead, because you're not doing anything while you are running around doing, you know, just, just looking for health pack or whatever. So thinking about your rotations back into health packs, how much damage can you take, uh, what abilities can you burn, and doing a rotation back in, so you can constantly get to whatever. And Defran does this by constantly rotating back into some of his hubs, right? He rotates normally always over here. He rotates, tries to rotate back up into a uh, bridge area, right? Either mo Mostly either through here or through here, right? Either one of these gives him access to bridge, right? He rotates, and uh, when, he, when he dies from respawns, he normally tries to take control over catwalk so he can move to blue box and play from there on out, right? Which again gives him access to here, which gives him access to here, right? Same goes with second point. From he, he always tries to, if he gets caught, normally the fighting over here, right? If he gets caught, he tries to rotate up through stairs so he can get back up here. And he constantly does this to keeping himself active, to giving him opportunities in the way that he plays. That way he will, he always get opportunities. A lot of the frags that he got there was low targets, targets that were alone, targets that was trying, that thought they were safe, but because he constantly wrote, because like, oh yeah, he got zoned out, right? They chased away the tracer, it's fine. But he rotates back in very quickly, very aggressively, and therefore he's always active in that game. So, uh, that's really all for today. Uh, tell me down below if you guys want to and what pro players or streamer or in general what, what guy you want me to take out next. Do you guys like these kind of breakdowns? Um, I think that's very interesting to see how the friend handles pressure and how he does his playstyle. I think mean, there's something that everybody can learn from that. Um, but outside of that, uh, tell me down below. Drop a like on the video if you like. Uh, share it around. That always helps out. And if you want to hire me as a private coach, 50 years for a two-hour session. Doesn't matter if you're bronze or top 100. I can coach you either way. Uh, so hit me up on our Discord server. All of that. Uh, my Twitter, my Twitch, Discord, and of course, that the friends, the social media, his uh, YouTube, his Twitch, and so on, will be linked down in the description as always. I love you guys very much. Please take care of yourselves. Stay positive. And as always, guys, my name is Jordan, and you guys keep getting me in your crosshair.